Hey everybody, welcome to Intelligent Image. Today I want to go through the process of actually creating something using the Stable Diffusion plugin for Krita. There are a lot of different possibilities, but I'm going to be going through one possible workflow. I'm just starting out with a blank canvas. Now I'm doing it perfectly square at a thousand by a thousand pixels. You do want to start out fairly small, especially when you're just starting and you want to do a lot of iterations. The bigger your canvas is, the slower it's going to be to generate anything. So you could even go smaller than a thousand by a thousand if your hardware is slower maybe try 768 by 768 if you're doing something square and you'll just go to image scale image to new size and you can adjust your image size here and you would only need to worry about the pixel dimensions so I'm just gonna leave mine at a thousand by a thousand and there's a lot of ways I could start out I could use the live mode and try and paint something in here or just generate something completely new. But I did this sketch recently that I wasn't entirely happy with and I decided just to sort of abandon it. But I thought I might bring this in here and maybe using one of the control nets, see if we can get something more finished from this. So to set this up, I think I'm going to try using the VXP Turbo checkpoint that I've got set up for my style here. That's an SDXL model. For my prompt, I usually don't go too much into the prompt if I have an image I'm already starting with and I'm expecting this to do a lot of the work for me in terms of what's being created here. So I'm just going to list out the things that are in the image. So I could say girl, leather jacket, gloves, white hair. And I think that'll be good enough. I might add space and stars just to sort of keep the sci-fi space theme that I have going. Also within the style prompt here in the settings. Um, I have a lot of things already put in here. These were suggested just on the model page for the VXP Turbo checkpoint. And these are just things that I keep in all of my prompts just to affect the style. There's also a few basic things in here for the negative prompt. So now I want to add a control net. I'm going to use the line art and in my advanced settings here, Maybe, maybe I'll just try these where they are at the default. I'm going to leave my strength at 100%. Otherwise, it will start taking some of this white from the image. And I'll just click generate and see what it does. I'm not expecting fantastic results. I don't think it's going to be able to get the hands quite the way I had them here. But let's see what it does. Okay, that's actually better than I expected. It seems like it actually even got the hands pretty right. Maybe even a little bit better than I did. I think it added a little bit of thickness to the side of the hand. So let's try maybe increasing the strength of the control net a little bit and maybe taking the range down a little bit. Okay, now I've had this problem before where it's starting to take the line art and sort of make this neon effect, which is an interesting stylistic choice. That tends to happen when the control net is over, the strength is over one. So I might move that down a little bit, keep it below one. So let's try 0.96 and maybe move the range down. Okay, so I like the look of what it's giving me. I might turn my range up just a Bit. And this is just going to have it sample or keep sampling the control net later into the image generation process. Maybe keep that up a little bit higher just because we're losing a little bit on the hand here. And what I might do is go here and set my batch size up to 10 and have it generate 10 images for me. And I can pick which one I like the best. Okay, so I think this one maybe has the most potential overall. At least I like it the most. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply here. And there are some parts that I don't think are great. Like there's this kind of weird part on her hand and her hair is not quite right here. So I might use the live mode to go in and try and clean these up. So I'm going to click over here and switch to live mode. I'm going to delete my control net layer there. So I'm going to select just the parts that I want to edit. I'm going to start with the hands here. Maybe I should keep my control net for these hands in particular. Maybe I'll try it without it and see what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and click the play button. Yeah, we're losing a lot of information. So let's try our line art control net. And I'm going to create a new layer. A Increase the control net strength. Okay. And as I'm doing this, I'm gradually realizing that this is probably entirely unnecessary <laughs> to even use the live mode for this. Uh, this would be pretty easy to clean up without that. 
but this is a demonstration. Let's go ahead and make her gloves match somewhat, even though I'm not real crazy about that color. I may even make it match this color. Okay, now I can hit this icon here and it will create a new layer for me. And now it's sampling that new layer down here, so I might even do that again. And that refines that a little bit more, maybe a little too much. So let's just keep our first try. And before I deselect this, I want to hit the pause button up here or it will immediately start sampling our entire image and may hang things up a little bit just because um, it will take it a long time to update for the, for the entire image. So I'm going to deselect that. I'm not completely happy with all the changes that's made here. So what I might do is right click on our new layer we just created and go to add transparency mask. And now if I set my color to black and select the airbrush, I can go in and paint out any changes that I don't want there. Now I might try changing just this bottom part of the image here, both this part where her hair comes out to the side here and Whatever this is, it looks like a belt. So I'm going to create a new layer. Click play. Maybe adjust this. Okay, that's hard to see. I, I apologize. But I'm going to turn my strength here up to maybe 40%. Grab my brush and maybe I can just erase this out. So I'll wait for that to update again from our new layer and repeat that again. Yeah, maybe we'll go with that. Man, I'm going to have to do some more cleanup here, obviously, but we're still going to be making some changes. So I'm not going to go too much into the nitty gritty here of trying to fix small problems. What I might do next is upscale this maybe by 1.5 times. So I'll give us 1500 by 1500. For my upscale model, I'm using Run Diffusion. So I've got about a million to choose from here. But this one says anime, so I might choose that. I really don't have a strong preference and don't know that much about it. We're not using this to create our final image, so we are still going to be changing this. And I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference at this stage in the process, what we choose here. I'm going to click refine upscaled image here and use my VXP turbo model, but I'm anticipating that causing an issue. So I'm going to put it down to about 25%. And let's see how that turns out. Okay, so it looks okay for the most part, but we have lost a lot of details, especially in the hands. So I don't think that's what we want. The issue is we were able to use a control net here, but the for the refine here, we're not able to add a control net. So what I might do is undo that just with control Z and I've had to hit control Z several times to completely undo the upscale. So just watching to where it actually goes all the way back down to thousand by a thousand down here. So I'm going to uncheck or find upscaled image and just have it do the upscale with the upscale model that it has here. Let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, so obviously this is a lot less refined, but it is closer to our original image. And I think that's okay. So now I want to further refine this upscaled image. But instead of using the refined upscale image option here, I'm just going to switch this back over to generate and just resample the entire image, but using our control net here. And I may switch this from line art to maybe depth. And for our reference for the control net, I'm going to switch this to the upscaled image we just created and take our strength down to about where we would have put it if we were doing this at the same time as the upscale and maybe adjust our control net strength or maybe about that's about where we need it. And let's click refine. And I think this is just doing exactly the same thing as that extra step in the upscale mode, where it's just running it through stable diffusion again. But here we can actually use our control net to keep it a little bit closer to our original image. And my batch size here is still at 10. So let me fix that, take it back down to one and go ahead and cancel all of those. So it's made a couple of them for me and I like them, but they are very blurry. And this is a problem that I've had with the SDXL models, in particular, resampling an image. 
it tends to degrade the image somewhat in a way that the 1.5 models don't, but a control net is a way around that. Actually, in one of my earlier videos, I promised to cover this later on, so maybe now's the time for that, but this isn't a fantastic fix, but a control net allows you to use an SDXL model to resample your image at a higher strength, which is what it needs in order to not end up with these blurry or washed out looking results. So, Let's take our control net strength up a bit and our denoising strength here up maybe to 65% and see if that gives us a better result. Still not quite. So it is giving us some more details. Let me actually try changing the control net back to our original line art and reselecting that line art layer, taking this down a bit. Let me try that again, taking this down a bit more, Maybe taking our strength down a bit also. That's not bad. Let's change the style quite a bit though. Actually, just out of curiosity, I'm going to see if I bring in this old piece of art of mine back from the pre-AI days. It's a sort of a photo bash sort of thing. Photo bash digital painting mix. I want to see if I can copy the style of this onto our image. So let me go ahead and rename this. Let's see. And let's look at our preview layer again and see if it can capture my style by using the style control net. So I'm keeping my line art there and it's selected the photo bash layer for the style. I'm going to have it skip a little bit of the range at the beginning because the style transfer, I found it does tend to pull some actual objects from the reference image. You may want a little bit of less, a little bit less of that. Let's just see what that gives us. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of the style. Okay, I can see the influence a little bit. Maybe turn down our line art control net a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. I take the style strength down a little bit and maybe have it do a batch of five of these for me. Okay, so I think I like this one the best. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that one. And I want to increase the resolution on her face. So I'm going to select her face, maybe select a little bit more there just to give it some context as to what we're looking at and copy that and paste it, deselect everything, and scale this up. Then right click on this layer and click Select Opaque, and that will select everything in that layer. And then I'm going to rename this layer Face so that I can select it here. And I think what I need to do first here is generate a control layer from this image. I'm not sure if it does that automatically, actually because I haven't started out with a line art from a non-line art image. I'm going to click refine and see if that works. Okay, so that didn't quite work. So I think what's happening is we need to generate line art from our reference layer here. So let's click this from image here. And now it's given us some line art. So let's just move this layer down. So we still have our preview layer here and select our line art here. And it's already selected that for us, the control line art and Maybe let's take our strength down a bit and try that again. Okay, so here's what it's given us and I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, I know what's happening. Okay, here's the issue. So let me hide my preview layer. I created the control layer and now that's on the top of my layer stack here and it's hiding everything underneath it. So I want it to be denoising this image, but because I've got my new control layer sitting on top, it's only seeing this. So I need to move this down below these. So now I can reference this again because the denoising here only sees what's on the top of your layers over here. It basically flattens everything that it sees or everything, all the layers in your image and uses that for uh, the new generation. So I just need to put my control line art that I just generated down below where it's not visible anymore, but I can still select it here. So let's turn our preview layer back on here and click refine. Okay, so that's working now. We are losing a bit of our style there. Not too bad, but we are losing the anime sort of style. I'm actually going to try taking my style influence here all the way down just for the face. 
and that's not really what we want so let's try turning this back up it's not too bad i may actually because i like the style of this face change our style here from my photo bash image to just our face layer here so just this and let's see if that will help maintain our style because it wants to change it more towards the general style of our checkpoint here okay i think what is happening now is that it's no longer referencing the right layer here for our control line art so i went over this in my last video where if this happens i think so i think it's just referencing this layer now for the control net we want it to be referencing well, we want it to be referencing this one so if we take our control layer here and duplicate it and rename it and reselect that here let's see if that fixes the problem so i'm not sure what's happening here Okay, so I've removed my style layer and it seems to be working again. I like that actually. So I think it may have been my style layer that was referencing the wrong image. I don't know why it would have affected it like that though. Let me try adding it back in. Face. Okay, so that's definitely the problem. So let me try the fix of duplicating the layer that it's referencing and renaming it, selecting it here. Okay, that worked. So what was happening, I think, is that I wanted the style layer to be referencing our face layer here. And what I was actually doing was referencing this uh, image of our full body. So it was pulling this composition um, into, the, uh, into our layer with just the face, which I don't know why that would work that way with the style control net. But it does seem that that was the problem because when I did the fix that I've come up with of duplicating and renaming the layer it's supposed to be referencing and then selecting that new layer it did work and uh, create the image properly and I like the result her face looks a little more expressive here so what I can do now is go ahead and apply this I'm going to set this layer that I just created to around 50% opacity I'm going to turn off the visibility of my scaled up layers there and now Scale this back down and try and line this up as best I can. Keeping in mind it has been changed a bit. Adjust the scale. It looks pretty good. And now I can right click on that layer, add a transparency mask, set my color to black. And with the airbrush, I can paint out those parts that aren't blending in the way I want, including getting our old hands back here. All right, so let's just add a lot of resolution to our face there, and I like that better. I might try adding in a filter layer and using the color adjustment here and adding a little bit of contrast to this because it looks a little washed out. And I may make this a little bit more extreme than where I want it and then just dial that back a little bit with the layer opacity here. So maybe that's pretty good. And then do the same thing, add filter layer and go to enhance, unsharp mask and turn that up a little bit past where I want that also and adjust that with the layer opacity just to sharpen things up a little bit and not overdo it. So I think that about does it. I may go back in and just clean up a few things by hand. All right, so that about does it, and I'm pretty happy with the result. The only thing I ended up using the AI for, again, was just to clean up her arms where I removed those black sleeves from her arms. What I could even do is save this and go back to my original sketch and use my AI creation here as a reference for what the finished product might look like, and then just go ahead and finish the whole thing out myself. And I'm going to work on something like that for next time. But in the meantime, for more information on the Generative AI plugin for Krita, see my other videos.